Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. Each Sunday I post a video and this could either be a real-time demo, it could be a tutorial, it could be a plein air adventure, or sometimes a combination of all three. I paint quite a wide range of subjects including animals, landscapes and portraits, and I use a reasonably wide range of media as well, including conventional acrylic, interactive acrylic, watercolour, ink tents, pencil, biro, alcohol markers, sharpie markers, and sometimes I just combine all of these. Today I'm using some mixed media paper and I've used a blue watercolour marker pen to create a drawing of some Frisian dairy cattle. So these cows on the left here, these two animals in the foreground, I like the idea that they've just kind of wandered into frame from the left. And originally I was going to add some other animals here off in the distance to create a sense of depth. But having added the third cow on the right here, and I like the interaction of these three in the foreground, I think that works quite well, but I felt things were getting a little too crowded. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, grab a decorator's brush and some conventional acrylic, and I'm going to block in the background. So in terms of the conventional acrylic, I'm just using some System 3. I've got titanium white, fluorescent blue, fluorescent yellow, fluorescent pink, and burnt umber as well. To start off with, I'm just going to be mixing the blue and the white to put in a background sky. All right, well, I've started out by mixing just some of the fluorescent blue and the titanium white. Uh, it's mostly white, and as you can see, I've just got a pretty big, I think it's just like a three inch decorator's brush. Now I've sprayed the paint in the palette with a little bit of water just to keep things flowing. These conventional acrylics, they do dry out quite quickly. Um, so, you know, on a warm day especially, helps to have the old water spray bottle to hand just to slow things down a little bit. Just added a bit more white. We'll add just a little bit of texture to the background by wobbling the brush as we go from right to left across the paper. And then I'm putting the paint on a little bit more thickly just here because I've got those two distant animals or the remains of the drawing that I need to remove. But you can see that with the big brush, I mean, it's kind of obvious, I guess, but you can cover a big area really quickly. And that little bit of water spray uh, sprayed into the paint and onto the paper, it really helps things, uh, the paint move and glide across the surface of the paint the surface of the paper as well and that uh, yeah, makes a big difference in terms of covering things nice and quickly. So I'm being reasonably careful when I come up to the outline of my drawing. I may make some changes later on to the actual line work. And I've actually got a smaller flat brush to hand should things get too fiddly and I may switch to that in just a moment but as I come down towards the very bottom of the painting I'm just picking up some more white and we'll make things even paler down here let's just get a little bit more water on there Now you'll notice I haven't really included all of the legs or the feet on most of these animals. And the reason for that is I'm probably going to put in a bit of um, hedgerow or something coming into the bottom of frame. So there's sort of a little bit of a barrier between the viewer and the cattle, which is usually the case, you know, because um, 
unless you're in the field with them. In England, you're normally looking over a hedgerow, at least in part. Let's get a bit more in there. So obviously that's just a pretty quick and simple blocking in of the background to give us a nice summer sky. So next I'm going to come in with a Liquitex acrylic paint marker. Now these paint markers, I've already given it a good shake, um, but they've got this chunky 15 mil nib. So what I'm actually going to do is use this for the base layer of paint on the animals, and I'm going to apply the paint in such a way that I'm kind of mapping out the contours of the animal as I go. Now I don't need to be overly fussy about this, but um, my hope is that this is going to provide a good mid-tone onto which I can obviously go darker or lighter. And because this, this is conventional acrylic, it'll dry very quickly. So it's going to seal the rest of the paper so that when I come in later with my interactive acrylics, I'm going to have this lovely sealed smooth surface uh, over which those in, those interactives will glide, hopefully. Uh, and I'm hoping that's going to you know, make things nice and efficient for me and save me uh, a reasonable amount of time. Now with the legs, I guess, you know, strictly speaking, I should be putting rounded marks there. But like I said, I don't need to be too fussy. But in general, now if the paint, now you've got two, I'll come back to the in general bit in a minute. If this nib starts to dry out as it is now, then you can just carry on and you get some nice dry brush effects. Um, but if you find it's really, you know, not enough paint going down, then you can just, um, I'll try and show you now. This is what I was about to tell you. Um, this, this is the in general point that I was trying to make. So um, if you prime the nib a few times, well, okay, so you definitely want to avoid that. I overdid it there. Uh, so let's see if I can save that quickly. So because that underlying blue I'm hoping is pretty much dry, I didn't actually test it before to check, but it looks like I've got away with that by coming in quick with the water spray bottle, even though it's conventional acrylic. I need to move this now before I continue chatting so that I don't get the same problem. Um, and, you know, because this is waterproof underneath, I, I was able to lift off that run. So that is one of the slight downsides of these markers. The, um, I don't know whether that's because I didn't shake the marker sufficiently, um, when I, or it might be just simply that I primed the nib um, you know, onto paper, which is almost vertical. So I'm, I'm working a little bit quicker now and with a little more haphazardly because I just want to catch all of that pool of paint so that it doesn't uh, go absolutely everywhere. Nevertheless, although, you know, I've lost, you know, really I've just blocked in the body, I'm still going to be sealing the surface. So that hasn't worked quite as well as hoped, but um, it'll still be okay. Fingers crossed. Okay, so that's that animal more or less blocked in. Let's do the rear leg here. Yeah, so for the reason you just saw, I typically use these markers for the most part in kind of dry brush mode because um, although I'm doing a painting today, this kind of mark making that I've got on the head and um, on the legs, you know, even if the pen has run out, the nib of the pen is, is running much drier, for doing expressive sort of dry brush drawings, these marker pens are actually really good. Um, and that's the way I normally use them. But that said, you know, I mean, that sort of run, I haven't had that happen too often. Um, and they are really good for just blocking in big swathes of um, acrylic in a reasonably controlled way. But for me, they're very much something to keep uh, in the studio, you know, at home. Um, I don't really take them out and about with me because if I get a spill like that, um, it's just, yeah, it's just a, all a bit messy, basically. Uh, but there we go. It's worked rather better, I feel, on that left-hand animal. And then we can come over to the third cow now.
now just because i am you know blocking this stuff in fairly quickly it doesn't mean that i'm assuming my drawing is perfectly correct so i'm looking at the moment what i'm doing is as i'm doing this i'm looking for you know glaring errors but i'm not overly concerned with more minor ones but when i come to paint the animals in a bit then you know i will be taking more care to ensure that i've got things right you know hopefully i'm not too far out but um you know always always check at every stage unless of course you know you know having said that sometimes i do just kind of go with the flow um, and sometimes the errors you make can actually make for a more expressive dynamic painting so it kind of depends what you're looking to do But for example, one of, one of my paintings of a, of a cow, um, The Courage of Youth, it's one of my favourites. I'll pop it up on screen. It's one of my favourites um, and uh, it's proved you know, relatively popular in terms of print sales. And I sold the original as well um, a few years ago. So, but if you look at it, um, I think, you know, and you were to compare it to the reference photo, I think there would probably be quite a few errors between my drawing and the actual lines of the animal in question. However, as an expressive piece of artwork, I think, you know, it's, as I said, it's one of my favorites. Now I'm going to switch to interactive acrylic. So I've got some tinting white, cadmium yellow light, permanent alizarin, ultramarine blue and burnt umber. All right, well, I've loaded up my palette and I'm going to start out just by grabbing some pure ultramarine blue. And I'm gonna use this for the darkest colors on this middle animal. Now, you know, if you watch my channel regularly or you're familiar with my work, you'll know that I'm not a great user of gray. I tend to use, you know, more vibrant colors. So the reason I've used this gray underlayer is I'm kind of interested to see how the, the more vibrant colors play against this neutral uh, layer of paint. So we'll see how that works as we, as we get going. So I sprayed the surface of the painting um, as mentioned uh, with water. So as mentioned earlier, um, the reason for that is it helps the paint glide across the surface and the other thing is when you do that onto a moist surface as I am now applying the paint you know you you leave the brush stroke visible in the patch of paint you're putting down so when you're painting animals which are obviously covered in hair that's a really efficient way of creating that texture and then underneath that of course I've got the underlying texture of the gray paint so I'm hoping there's going to be a little bit of interesting interaction. Now, obviously, because these are Frisians, there are patches of white on the on the animal as well. But we'll get to that, uh, you know, a bit later. So at this relatively early stage in proceedings, I ignore things like the eyes. I don't. You know, try to include them. Same with the nostrils. I'll put those in towards the, the end, or at least later on in the painting. So with the head for this particular animal, it's, you know, it's jet black, except for that triangle of white. So, you know, that's, I can, I can put that triangle in later. For the leg here, that's pretty much all white as far as I can see. So I'm going to, going to leave that for now and I'm going to work, work on the body. And, you know, if there is a patch of white here, I'll leave that uncoated, I think, for now. Uh, just to make it a, perhaps a little bit easier to introduce the white later. But I'm keeping my brush strokes, um, 
you know aligned with the contours of the of the surface of the animal and i'm just using i forgot to say just using a half inch flat relatively frayed synthetic brush here So that's sort of changed the way the painting is looking al already. So now I'm going to move over to this animal here on the far left. Now in my reference, this, this particular cow is uh, kind of a reddish brown and white, but I'm going to keep the, the black and white theme going across the entire painting. So. So there's going to be less to do with the blue here because this particular cow is predominantly white. So what I'm doing at the moment is wherever I see some red or predominantly red. So, for example, on the back of the neck here, you know, there's quite a patchwork of color. But rather than get fiddly at this early stage, I've just blocked that in with the darker color. And as you can see, now moving over to the side of the body, perhaps put a little bit there. And, you know, I don't have to copy the pattern exactly. It's, you just want to capture the essence of it, really. So that's probably all I need to do for that left hand animal. And for the young lady on the right, it's going to be a similar technique to what I just did for the left hand cow. So we've got some darker color. On the side of the head there. The ear. Along the back of the neck and then a big patch of big patch of dark color on the side of the body as well all right so we're starting to shift things towards the the sort of colors I want to end up with. So what I'm doing now is um, just taking that blue and, you know, massively increasing, well, the, the amount of uh, tinting white I've got in the mixture so that I've got a pale blue now. And that's going to act as my base color over the top of that gray for the lighter areas of each animal. Um, I, I suppose I could put in a triangle here. Don't know that I need to really, but um, may as well pop a little triangle of light in there just to remind me for later. So that's that. Uh, I suppose I could put a bit in there as well. So that's the middle animal done. Move over to the left cow. And again, I'm applying the paint fairly thinly onto a wet surface. So again, some of that gray both texture and color 
will show through. And then over to the cow on the on the right hand side of the painting again you know we're just blocking in being mindful of the direction of the brush strokes and if i get to pick up a little bit of this still wet darker color and that mixes in you know that's okay um, these kind of automatic mixing effects that you get uh, can often be more expressive than you know something that you've labored over for me anyway something that i've labored over for hours so i always find it's kind of um you know unless it kind of really detracts from what you're trying to depict it's often best to just leave those marks So I've covered all three of the animals with kind of a mid-tone for the dark area of the hide and a mid-tone for the light area of the hide. So what I'm going to do next is I've just cleaned my brush. I'm picking up some, I'm picking up some of the, um, the ultramarine blue and I'm mixing that with the burnt umber to give me uh, a really dark dark. And I'm going to go back into these dark areas on the middle animal and start to create more of a sense of form by putting in some of the darkest shadows. Now, the... Uh, the paint isn't moving around quite as much as I would like, so just spraying the paint on the palette and the and on the painting itself with a bit of water. And that's one of the things I've noticed with the interactives. I think it's true of all acrylics, actually. Um, for example, I would say in general, the uh, ultramarine blues are generally more fluid and translucent than burnt umber, for example, which tends to be thicker uh, and gloopier. So I'm really just trying to pick out the, the shapes of the shadows that I see. Um, you know, I'm still working wet in wet, so I'm getting some variation in tone of those shadows. For the most part, trying to avoid those little light patches that I've put down, because I don't want to mix things too light. And then we'll come over to the left-hand animal, so there's a darker shadow within the ear there. Put a bit of a dark shadow over the eye. I'm not sure that that's actually there, but I think that's going to work quite well. Another bit of darkness in the ear. Along the side of the neck there. And that's probably enough for that one for the moment. And then moving over to the right, Again, there's a bit, a bit more darkness in the ear here. Perhaps a little bit under the eye. And then a 
little bit there and a little bit down here but I, I'm really liking the looseness of this animal on the right so I'm not going to do too much more to her for the moment I don't think so moving back to the center animal just cleaned my brush and I've picked up a lot of the tinting white and just a touch of the light blue that I used earlier here and what I'm going to do is add some highlights that are just a bit lighter than what I've got at the moment. So for example on the left side of this leg there's a flash of light and there on the underside of the chest. So having cleaned my brush out, I've just added some the beginnings of some highlights um, onto the middle animal here. And this is a mixture of the tinting white with just a touch of that lighter blue that I used earlier. And what I'm doing is as I'm working, the, the paint is sort of getting a little bit dirtier is it because I'm working wet in wet so it's picking up some of the darker color so I'm, I am refreshing the brush with a bit more tinting white where needed but what I'm trying to avoid doing at the moment is putting down a pure pure white because I want to leave you know leave myself somewhere to go with the brightest highlights later on in the painting Now, I've let the painting almost completely dry. There are a couple of areas which are still pretty wet, just here, for example. My original plan was to put in a kind of hedgerow in the foreground. Uh, I'm now thinking I'm probably not going to do that, and I may just crop the painting along here. I really like the way this right-hand animal is looking, and you know, to the extent that I may not do much more to it at all. I, I'll probably put a nostril and an, and an eye in, possibly an indication of the mouth. I don't know. It's, you know, it's just a random set of patches of paint, but to me it just says cow at the moment and I don't want to lose that. So, you know, I'll, I'll have a think about that. Less so with the left hand one. I need to do a bit more there, but I've always wanted the middle animal to be the focus. So what I'm going to do next is 
work up the head to a much more finished level and then we'll see where we are. The other thing I'm thinking is I may just put a little line of a pale pink sort of going all the way across the bottom of the painting here just to bring a little bit of warmth to the colour scheme. We'll see about that as well but let's get going on this head. So I've just mixed up um, this colour here and I've done that with the tinting white some of the blue I had from earlier and some of the darker blue and burnt umber that I had from earlier and that's created what I hope will be a pretty good kind of highlight colour sort of a subdued greyish blue. We'll see how that goes. Um, I'm sticking with the same brush for the moment which is the half inch flat and let's see what this looks like when I put it down on the uh, painting. I think that's a little bit too light so need to add a bit more of that dark colour that I have pre-mixed from earlier. And that is, that is still, I don't know, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Let's, let's carry on with that for the moment and we'll see, uh, see what it looks like when it's dried back. I think that's working reasonably well um, at the moment so we'll continue with that same colour And I think I may be able to use that same colour as the beginnings of a shadow colour on the leg as well. That's working reasonably well. So we can continue, continue with that um, on the underside of the chest here. And then I think I'm going to keep going with that um, on, on the animal on the left as well. So I can put a bit of shadow on the right hand side of the upper head. I could probably just do with making the surface of the painting a little bit wetter over there.
Now there are some little uh, bits of the watercolour marker drawing just showing through there and I'm quite content to, uh, to leave those for the moment. All right, well, I've switched to a filbert now and um, I'm just grabbing some more of the tinting white and I'm mixing that into that same color that I was using just a moment ago. And sticking with the, the center animal. we can begin to introduce a few highlights on the nose here. Now, my entire color scheme at the moment, apart from that um, initial bit of gray that I put down and the little bit of burnt umber I mixed in to create some darker, darker tone has been entirely blue and, and you know, and the white. Um, so my plan is to stick with that for the most part but then what I will do is come back and just put in some little bursts very subtle bursts of warmth here and there I think so I'm just highlighting the ear or the top of the ear on the left hand animal as well And then there's a little bit of a light in the corner, lighter sort of hair in the corner of the eyes. Got to come back and do the eyes in, in properly in a bit. But um, Now the eyes on the cow on the left aren't all that visible because of the angle of the head but definitely need an indication of them. Back to a mix of the blue and the burnt umber to get a really dark colour for the eyes. And then I can look around the, the rest of the head and see if I need to add any super dark shadows here and there as well. So the centers of the nostrils, for example. And I think, in fact, what, what's happened is with me spraying the painting with water and doing the blending, which, you know, creates some lovely effects, I have lost a little bit of the intensity of shadow on the left here. So we can just darken that. Using some thicker paint.
And having given that treatment to the center animal, I think I can afford to now darken some of the patterning on the left hand cow as well. Because again, I've kind of lost some of the that black and white. Well, I'm obviously I'm doing it with blue, but the blue and white, the black and white pattern patterning, which is you know um, characteristic of Frisians. Now I've mixed up um, some of the cadmium yellow light and the alizarin to create a sort of brownish orange and this is quite a bright colour so I'm just going to put a couple of little licks in of that to begin to add some warmth. But I'm going to use this you know relatively sparingly and I'm going to go darker um, in a moment. So let's grab, I um, don't know if you can see that, but I'm putting a little bit more of the alizarin in. And we'll grab a touch of what's left of the blue. And that's going to, well, that's actually quite a bit lighter than I intended, but I'll put that down for the moment. Let's get some of the some of the dark color and a bit more of the alizarin in there. And we'll see how that looks. It's a bit more like it. So although tonally it's not that much lighter than the adjacent blues, it's you know it's definitely warmer. And so that's enough to Just balance things out a little bit. And yeah, you know, what's always interesting, I think, is this is the same color as that, but they look very different because of the colors which they're next to. It's going a little bit lighter than for the underside there.
And now I've added uh, more of the alizarin into that mix, that sort of pale orangey brown that I had. I've added more of the alizarin. And we'll uh, use some of that for the end of the nose here. Let's just get that moving a little bit more fluidly. I can even, I think, afford to use some of that uh, a little bit higher up on the head. The next thing I want to do is just add some, you know, very bright highlights. So I've, I'm grabbing some pure titanium white. I've been using the tinting white up until now, uh, which is, you know, more translucent than the titanium white. So. I'm hoping this is going to, you know, add uh, a little bit more drama to the lighting. So as I'm, you know, doing this, I'm being quite careful to be fairly selective in terms of the patches of white I put down because I don't want to completely lose the, the brushwork that I've included so far. But at the same time, I do want to, you know, make the patterning on the animals clear or clearer than it is at least. I'm actually thinking about putting a, pa a larger patch of white on this one. I, d I don't know about that. Um, but what I will do is just put a bit of more white down here. And this foreleg, the shape of which I need to adjust a little bit, but we'll, we'll get to that. Now I've gone back, whoops, sorry about that. I've gone back to my half inch brush, the tinting white, and just a touch of the alizarin crimson. So I'm just going to try this idea that I mentioned earlier. And just put this burst of slightly warmer color um, in along the base here. I can use that to just tune up the shape of that leg a little bit. Still needs a bit more work, but we'll, as I said, we'll get to that.
and then I'm deliberately leaving little bursts of the underlying blue showing between these two bands of the pink that I'm putting down. I'll switch to a small round brush now and um, I've got some of the pure blue with just a you know a touch of the burnt umber so it's not as dark a color as I've used elsewhere. Just some indication of a nostril there and then the eye as well for this right hand animal. And I'll put a bit of light in the eye in a bit. All right, well, I actually experimented with introducing a nostril and an indication of the eye on this right hand animal. But when I did that, I thought, oh, no, I, I don't like it and I don't want to lose what I've got there. So I just removed them um, and I'm leaving that one as is. And then with the central animal, I just tidied up a bit. So I, I noticed that actually there was a little bit of a subdued purple in the colouring uh, on this animal. So I've used that. I've tidied up the eyes and the nostril and I've used that lighter purple as well on the legs, tidied up the some of the lines of the legs as well and just killed most of that sort of orangey brown that I put in earlier. Um, apart from that, that's, you know, it's pretty much uh, as is. So I'll show you the finished picture. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe and I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.